Josh Harris. I kill him to make the world a better place. The Josh Harris. The Josh Harris. The Josh Harris. The Josh Harris. You artificially inseminated a monkey. These artists are going to be famous. I saw a polar bear. Titties, 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 titties. Who saw that? He's jacking off backstage. Your like fire. Welcome to the Josh Air Show. We're sorry, world. Boobs. Okay, and welcome to the Josh Air Show. I'm Josh. With me is Rocket. Hey. And every now and again, Michelle's here too. Hello. And we're just hanging out. I'm tired. Why? It's not like you've done anything. That's true. Yeah, I don't know. You've been lazy all day. I have yeah. been lazy. I'm going to sit here and eat my quesadilla while we do the show. Because I'm looking for, you know, sponsorship from any taco place. So this can be the greatest taco quesadilla ever or the worst. You tell me. And then I'll tell the masses. What do you think? This is a good way to get advertisers. Josh loves tacos. And big burgers. Thank you for your input. <laughs> <laughs> I was just saying you would advertise it well. <laughs> I kept to... waiting for something to follow up. And it was... <laughs> hey, welcome to the Josh Air Show. I'm Josh. With me is Rocket. How you doing? And then we also have Shell. Hello. And now she's turned it too far down <laughs> so you can't hear her. You're awful at the controls. You're a terrible engineer. Well, this is my first time doing it. It's still bad. Can't hear you at all. Well, you turned me down too, didn't you? No, no, I can't turn you down over here. You need to get it together if you're going to be a part of this. Well, I didn't know I was going to be an you, You're not even talking in the microphone. Yes, this, I am. See, it's not even coming through. I don't know what to say. When I talk, it li- your interface lights up. Okay, cool. Your money then. Don't twist it anymore. Okay. I think you just blew it. You're terrible. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but welcome to the Josh Air Show. Um, this is show, what, three of the week? I have no idea. I don't remember. I think it's show three of the week. And on show three of the week, we, uh, well, we've been hanging out and <laughs> we've talked about a lot. Oh, we. Uh, how did your uh, sleep uh, test go? Went great. I slept, I recorded it, then I went home. Did Did you try to have the sex dream? No, I did not. No. I, for all I know, I did. He, he did look kind of stunned when he came in, but, you know. That's... <laughs> He's like, wow, that's a lot of boners. Oh, God. <laughs> Are they trying to see if you have sleep apnea? Yeah. Oh. When will you find out your results? Oh, I don't know. Oh, okay. It was time to go back for another visit. Sleep boners. Sleep boners, yeah. yeah. Those are the best boners. Do those wake you up? You, you know, my favorite they can. My favorite boner is like that morning, like when you, you get up and you're actually out doing something, but you're still really tired and you kind of do a stretch and blood really flows and you just pop a huge, massive bone. And to me, that's the favorite boner because it doesn't go away. It's just like you got shit to do and you can't get out and do it because you get this huge erection just poking out your pants. That's uh, where the raincoats come in. <laughs> yeah. Those are my favorite boners. What's your favorite boner? You're asking Michelle, I'm sure, because... No, I'm asking you. What's your favorite boner? Me. I know what her favorite boner is. It's my boner in the morning. <laughs> I don't know about in the morning. I mean, I'm not really a morning person. Do you hear her in your headphones at all? Yeah. Oh, okay. You don't. But no, don't. I don't at all, but that's fine. But yeah, uh, so what's your favorite boner, Rocket? I'm 64, any one. <laughs> <laughs> Beggars can't be choosers. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> what about you, Shell? What's your favorite boner? Um, I don't know. That's an odd question. I maybe not the morning one or the middle of the night. I've been asleep one. You don't like the I. You've been asleep. Getting poked with the boner, like, hey, wake up, boner? No, because I really value my sleep. So usually I'm kind of like upset <laughs> when when some a boner is poking me in the butt in the middle of the night and I just want to go to sleep. 
Really, what she's saying is she loves that. Don't ever stop. I I don't I don't think that's the same. She she doesn't sound like that's what she. <laughs> you believe me, I know. I, I I slept with her before. I know she loves being poked with the boner in the middle of the night. <laughs> you know that is so not true. I'm more of an afternoon delight. I like those boners. She does like those boners. <laughs> But I, I don't know. There's just something about that morning boner when you, uh, like, to me, like, I'm already up. I'm dressed. I'm, I'm I'm in my truck. I'm driving somewhere. And then I get there. And I have to wait, like, five minutes before I actually go into the place. So I sit there for a second and kind of stretch and just try to get woken up. And I'm still kind of tired. But then all of a sudden, it's just like, hello, uh, look at me, world. Hey, but those are, like, the show-off boners, too. Like, it's such a good boner that I would take it. And, like, show it to everybody if I could because, you know, it's full blood flow to it. Uh, you know, it's just that full on erection where it's, like, reaching so far that it's kind of reaching back. You know. How do you get rid of it? <laughs> I just, <laughs> I just waited. I mean, I just. Well, there's I just, several ways. <laughs> my favorite None ways. Of which to we can <laughs> talk about. Well, my favorite one, you can just release yourself right there and. And it'll go away. At least it does for me now. There was a time where you could do that, and it would be like, hey, it's still here. I, I could still go. <laughs> but that was like at like 19, 20, somewhere in there. But yeah, or that, or you just wait it out. Or, you know, you can go somewhere else in your mind. Like people, uh, was it, uh, you can have like your, you, you ever seen a movie Alone Came Polly or Ben Stiller? Like he's just, he screams, 50 because he made it 50 minutes or whatever but he keeps having to go through stuff in 50 his head. seconds not 50 minutes oh <laughs> he only made it 50 seconds really yeah oh i thought he made it 50 minutes i think he was going for like a minute and he was 10 seconds off oh wait but, a minute he was going for a minute yeah. No, he was This going is like for the first time they had done it. I mean, he was probably hoping longer, but he was trying to count to keep himself somewhat distracted. <laughs> but then he goes and he's like, 50! <laughs> and she's like, what? <laughs> it's kind of cute, though, isn't it? <laughs> he's just got excited. <laughs> I could have sworn he made it 50 minutes. No, it's 50 seconds. Hmm. Well, well, there goes my theory on that. <laughs> we can watch it tonight, though, to confirm. Nah, see, she wants to watch something to get in the mood tonight. No, no, and it's not quite the same. <sighs> well, look at it this way: the time will come. When? Yes, when? When will the time come? <laughs> and what time are we talking about? <laughs> oh. Well, actually, it's a good point. Uh, mm, I'm going to shut up now. I have no idea what you're talking about. I'm really lost. Good. You see, talking about a time where that will come when we come. <laughs> like what? Where you'll be excited that you made it 50 seconds. Oh. Oh. Okay. I'm just guessing. I don't know. I call those days weekdays. Actually, you know, I'm excited. You know, I call we, them weekends. Well, you know, when I was younger, it was like, uh, no, I want to be able to do it all night and everything. Now I'm just kind of like, oh, I'm there. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to roll over and go to sleep. <laughs> 30. Yeah, I know, man. The the ball game has changed for me. So just think think where you'll be when you're 80. Probably dead. <laughs> the way I've lived my life, 80 would be pushing it. Well, I don't know. I think if you laid off the fast foods, you'd be all right. Well, I think about the abuse that I did to my body earlier on in my life. But you's, you've also had healthy moments, you know. Yeah. Maybe they balance each other out. Uh, well, okay, so does like eating three oranges and and uh, living clean for a day, does that make up for like all the years of drug abuse? No, you probably need to eat clean longer than a day. I don't know. I think it should make up for a little bit of it. You know, I haven't had a cigarette in almost two years. That's got to help for you. That's going pretty good. I need one one. Although I did have a rocking cigar the other day. I got another one upstairs. I'm going to rock after the kid gets here. Yeah, but I feel like cigars aren't like an addiction. You don't have to have a cigar. Like they're such a rare, for most people, like you don't have a cigar every day. Well, yeah. I mean, some people do, but... 
to me, like kicking the cigarette habit was that was hard, man. That was tough. I did it though. Two years. I need to get me like one of those little things, like if I went to AA for cigarette smoking. You did you? Mean? What was it about that you were addicted about cigarettes? Like, what do you mean? I don't, was it the nicotine? Like, did it calm your nerves? Yeah, I th- or it had the illusion of doing it. I don't know if it actually did it. Like, I've smoked some before, but I couldn't ever imagine being addicted to it. It's like any other addictive drug. Yeah. It does calm your nerves compared to not being on it, but only be- because you're addicted to it. I don't know. I never felt calmed by a cigarette. Of course, you didn't smoke like I did. Like, I was knocking out two packs a day at one point. Menthols, too. Ugh, mm. that's so gross. Now I'm thinking about it like a nice menthol cigarette might be kind of nice. No, <laughs> no. I, so, those right, are you know, so I gross. Have one. I've, I've, I've beat, uh, you know, I've quit, so I can have one. It's like no. my father. He always used to smoke menthol cools. Mmm. No, no filters or anything. Oh, God. It's good for you. No, it was not good for him. That didn't kill him, but... It would keep you thin. It was yeah. That didn't keep him thin either. No. <laughs> Why are people skinnier when they smoke? Though a lot of people are like they gain weight when they quit smoking cigarettes. They don't eat because we eat. What we we substitute like oh. I put on all my weight when I quit smoking. Why? Because I need something to do. So when I drive down the road, instead of smoking a cigarette, I would eat some food or something like Reese pieces. Couldn't you just chew gum? What, how does that satisfy this? <laughs> well, you could pick your nose. <laughs> I could do that. I got into plucking nose hairs to make myself sneeze. <laughs> it's really entertaining. <laughs> have That's you right. told Dan? Uh, have I told you about the photo series that I want to do? No. Nope. I started with Josh because he can make himself sneeze by plucking his nose hairs. But it's called Involuntary Reaction. Because for most people, sneezing is kind of involuntary. And I took a picture of him when he sneezed. It was amazing. <laughs> Do you know how your face contorts when you sneeze, like in that split second? I have a pretty good idea. His lips are over on one side. His cheeks are over here. <laughs> he looks in pain. <laughs> it's a really cool picture. Just a little spit <laughs> yeah. flying out everywhere. No, that's going to be a cool series. You know, uh, we were working on another coffee table book at one point in time. Michelle was kind of doing it, and I just really rallied behind it. Yeah. Uh, what was it? It's called Rest in Pieces. Tales from the Road. It and was Roadkill. Uh, Roadkill. Ah. Yeah. And well, you know, Roadkill's kind of like when we lived in Savannah, there were a lot of armadillos dead on the road. You don't see that all the time. You don't see I, that in I Tennessee. I, maybe I could find it. I, I did a series a long time ago of uh, wrecks, car wrecks. Oh. You sick. No, son no, of a I didn't. Bitch. <laughs> no bodies or anything, just just the cars. Mm-hmm. How the cars were kind of twisted and contorted. Yeah. There were some pretty twisted up cars in that scene. I bet that is interesting. Actually, I went to grad school with somebody who did like the insides of junk cars. Some had been wrecked and some were just taken oh, cool to the dump. Idea. She took a monopod and would, she would shoot through the um, sunroof. And you got some really like, I well, don't know. The car didn't have a sunroof. I don't know. Maybe she just put it in. I, she, she made one. Yeah. <laughs> she made one work. Um, like people really live out of their cars. You know, most people, my dad and mom don't like their cars are spotless, but for the most part, you know, you'd find Bibles in cars or you'd find condoms in cars or it kind of. My car used to be filled with condoms. Cars. What? You probably find a lot of that stuff in cars. Yeah. Yeah. You can find. I don't know. It was kind of an interesting series. Not in my car, of course. No. No, never. Mine was loaded with lube and condoms and dirty mags. <laughs> really? I used Man, to get you so just, much tail, honey. You just sound like a dirty pervert. How you did like I end up too. with him? He's like, poke me with your boner tonight, you <laughs> dirty son of a. <laughs> Why don't you bring out some of your dirty mags and lube from your car? Ew. <laughs> no, keep those. I don't want to see that. No, I didn't have any of that stuff, actually. In fact, my car, back before I got with Shell, I had the, the little Celica little sports car. And it was clean as could be, man. I was really neat and tidy. Per- in fact, my truck's super clean right now. And yeah, you're really the good. only mess in my life. Well, we share a car. <laughs> 
So some of your stuff.